<laughs> hey Survivor fans, please like, share, and subscribe. Check out my Survivor Puzzle app. The link is in the video's description. There's a group of 16 of us, and the power is in our hands now. And we got a choice to make, and you know, that's something I don't take lightly. I think it's, uh, it's a very important decision. I'm, I, I feel like I put a lot of pressure on myself to make it to the final three and make it to the end. But now that that didn't happen, I'm actually very excited to be on the jury and to make my mark on the season in a different way. One thing that I can certainly praise about Tony's game is that, you know, he is Tony Vlacos. He was, he was the guy in Cagayan that found idol after idol, burnt person after person after person, and we're sitting here and Tony's here, you know, like we should have seen it coming. And for him to get here, he had to really change his game, especially early on in the game. And uh, he didn't run around looking for idols, you know. He was the guy that was in the camp, building shelter, helping people work, and, and building relationships instead of finding idols. And it just shows his versatility as a survivor player. I mean, I can honestly say that I think Tony's one of the, either is or is one of the top two or three greatest survivor players ever. And it's because of the game he played this time. And he, he, was, he was very good at, at building relationships. He's, he's a personable guy. He is a, a family man with kids. He is, uh, I mean, he's not the guy that was speaking llama on TV and yelling at Cass five or 10 years ago or whatever, you know? Like, like he is a good person. Um, and he has good timing. He understands the strategic element of the game. He, he understands how important a necklace is, even if it feels like you don't need it, he, he still wants it. Um, he understands how important having an idol is, even if um, he didn't look for him in the beginning because he couldn't, eventually he was able to look for him and he got one. Um, he understands how important relationships are and, and tight alliance members are and uh, he's very good at building those numbers and, and putting himself in the center of those groups. He's, I mean, he's probably one of the best, most well-rounded players we've ever had. So, Michelle, Michelle actually did a lot of things well, I think. The number one thing, in my opinion, about Michelle is that she is loyal. And that's a good trait in Survivor. She was loyal to me, she was loyal to Jeremy, and, uh, you know, she would have had my back until day 39, and uh, no questions asked. She, I mean, she was good at building relationships like that. She was good at finding people that had her back. Another thing Michelle's done well, she's been a survivor. I mean, she's been able to scrape by vote after vote after vote. And so many people thought Michelle would have been gone long, long ago. She has literally had to scrape and claw from day one. You know, she was left out of the very first vote when Natalie went home. And I feel like really the only time she's ever been in a super powerful position is when she was with me when we voted out Yule. And outside of that, she's been playing from the bottom. And, and that is a flaw in some ways, but I mean, it's, it's incredible to see an underdog survive to the end. And she's, you know, she's used people to get there like me and Jeremy um, and relationships to get there, but she's also won challenges when she needs them. Um, she's received tokens from people that left the game because of her ability to build relationships and she's used those tokens to benefit her in the game. So she's, she's clutch. And that, you know, that is a, that's a powerful ability to have. And, and it's not something that everybody has. It's not easy to just go and win a challenge when you need it. And I mean, her and Natalie got, got Ben voted out of this game. That's a pretty big move. So I think Michelle's done a good job at outlasting and always giving herself a chance to 
step up at the end. It's so hard to compare different seasons, different players, different eras of the game, but I honestly now believe that the two greatest players to ever play the game Survivor are Tony and Natalie. And Natalie does a lot of things great. She's unapologetic, she's great strategically, and she is absolutely resilient. She was the first person voted out. I can honestly say if I was the first one voted out, I might have raised the sale. Like honestly, I, I would I'd be like, what's the point in staying here for 34 days, miserable, starving, hungry? But instead, Natalie figured out the game. She figured out the edge. She earned, it sounds like, almost all the tokens. She got all the advantages in the challenge to win her way back in. She bought an idol to come back in with. She bought tons of peanut butter. Natalie was eating more than I was in the game of Survivor when she was on the edge of extinction for 34 days. I mean, that's incredible in my opinion. And she came into the game, the obvious boot, and made it. She survived it. And it wasn't just because of idols. She flipped the game immediately. She, um, of course, she earned her first idol, which saved her the first vote. And then she flipped the game on Ben. She didn't even need her idol. I think Natalie's definitely done enough to win this game. She's, I mean, she's done enough to earn my vote for sure.